My name is Vladimir Krejcer. This is being uh, presented uh, during the first International Society of Endovascular Specialists, the symposium that is being held here in Houston, Texas. We have a unique opportunity today uh, to have a guest um, at this particular presentation, Dr. Palma Shaw. She's an associate professor of surgery and program director of vascular fellowship at Sunny Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York. And uh, Dr. Shaw will, together with me, present interesting information on a variety of topics that were discussed uh, during this uh, ISEVS uh, symposium. During the symposium, we uh, had an opportunity to do uh, hands-on training for a variety of specialists uh, in uh, the field of endovascular therapy. Uh, and this was a unique opportunity and one of the largest uh, symposium of this kind in the world with a state-of-the-art technology. The introduction uh, for this symposium was to inform physicians about the cutting edge of angiographic imaging. Significant technological advances have been achieved in the last few decades related to uh, angiographic imaging, such as radiation reduction and introduction uh, in, in the integration of a variety of modalities uh, as far as imaging is concerned. Also significant improvements have been made in image uh, processing. All of those have offered us the opportunity to have a better, faster, safer, and more cost-effective care for our patients. Now, the most important thing is before we start talking about um, imaging is to know how to achieve re reduction in radiation dose. This is one of the issues that has been uh, plaguing our society for decades. And um, one of the important aspects to achieve that is to uh, approximate image intensifier with a table as much as possible. Also, it is also important to increase operator's distance from the image intensifier. Uh, by this, we can achieve exponential reduction in the radiation dose. We also need to use, on routine basis, protective lead shell shielding. This is important not only for the patient, but also for the operator and the staff that's involved in the procedure. Important aspects also include reduction in the frame rate when appropriate and uh, reduction in the image magnification and proper shielding. Also, it's very useful to reduce frequency and length of angiographic imaging and uh, offer more frequent fluoroscopic imaging rather than angiographic recording. We should also pay attention to uh, operators' radiation dose procedural and cumulative, as well as patient's radiation dose. Here are a few images that we would like to show you to exemplify how we can achieve that. On the left-hand side, we can see a significant separation from the image intensifier to the patient. There is a significant scatter there, but it increases radiation to the patient and also to the operator and the staff around. In the middle image, we can see a uh, uh, where the II uh, is reduced uh, in the distance from the patient, and that obviously reduces the dose of radiation. Proper shielding, as is shown in the third image, is also extremely important. And finally, the operator should have a complete coverage as much as possible to reduce the radiation with a proper lead apron, hat, and also goggles. Now, I would like for Dr. Palma Shaw to tell us a little bit more about, not only about radiation aspects, but a little bit more about uh, International Society of Endovascular Specialists and her current role, and what is the future of this society? Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. I've newly taken on the role of secretary of this prestigious society. Uh, one of the interesting things that we're going to do is to focus on radiation safety. Uh, and we've seen a beautiful introduction regarding that. Uh, this is a really an important topic because radiation is invisible and it affects the patients as well as the people operating the machinery. 
This has been noted in the FDA. Over years, they've tried to have regulation regarding the radiation exposure using CAT scans and x-rays so that this can be monitored and reduced to protect patients. But they have noted over the last two decades a doubling of radiation exposure to people, patients, and in the environment. So as a result, some states such as California have actually started uh, legislation to try to enforce this. And they've, FDA has continued to encourage physicians to document the radiation dosages that we've been using to evaluate patients and treat patients on a daily basis. When patients are exposed to radiation, uh, damage can occur to DNA. That can lead to problems such as skin breakdown or cancer. And what we would like to do is try to educate people and inform them how they can live a safer life and use radiation more wisely. So to do so, what we'd like to do is explain that proper shielding and proper protection methods have to be used by the operators, as Dr. Crazier has discussed. Also, there's different technologies that's evolving that will help us do better with patients in reducing radiation exposure. People can have uh, developed cataracts over time, as well as have problems with sterility and radiation sickness with too much exposure. This is very important that the operators uh, be educated to wear lead glasses so that they don't lose their vision over time. This can affect their livelihood. We also want to be more aware about radiation in pregnancy. I, uh, I do interventions. I'm exposed routinely to radiation, and I had two children during my career, at which time little was known regarding how we should protect ourselves. I routinely would double lead, but we've shown subsequently through research with collaboration in multiple papers that we've published that it is safe to be pregnant and have a child using proper lead shielding and standard of standard radiation protection methods in this day and age. I think it's important that women who are going into the field of vascular surgery or work in an environment where there is exposure to radiation have a proper education about how to protect themselves and that it is safe to be in that environment when you're properly shielded. What I would like to uh, ask you, Dr. Shaw, uh, you're a vascular surgeon, but there are a lot of specialties that are involved in the field of endovascular interventions. What is your opinion about um, protection, uh, reducing the dose of radiation among different specialties and their knowledge and their awareness about the risk of radiation? I believe that the radiologists and interventional radiologists at this time probably have the best training and knowledge regarding this, this, uh, the radiation exposure and how to protect themselves. I feel that vascular surgeons who are doing an increasing number of complex endovascular procedures and also interventional cardiologists are at risk and don't have quite the level of exposure education and understanding uh, as the radiologist, as our colleagues, the radiologist. Very good. Uh, would you uh, like to uh, mention to us uh, what uh, has been done uh, so far in different uh, specialties to address this issue and uh, whether the International Society of Endovascular Specialists is interested in taking that role and responsibility to uh, make uh, the interventionalists more aware about the radiation risks. So when I conducted research regarding this, I found that most of the published literature and guidelines, particularly in radiation safety for pregnancy, is really in the radiologic literature. Uh, vascular surgeons need to take a lead in this. I think the International Society for Endovascular Specialists has a special place for this because of Ted Dietrich, our, our founder and the pioneer of many different techniques, who passed away from a brain tumor and he, uh, and it's his legacy, I'm sure would like to see the society carry on trying to educate all of the interventionalists so that the same fate does not occur to them. What we've done, for example, in other societies is start uh, having courses on radiation safety only very recently. Most of the vascular societies are not promoting this adequately. And that's why the ISEVS is going to take a lead role and we will start uh, promoting this on our website, distributing education throughout the world, trying to protect endovascular specialists globally. Excellent. Thank you very much.
and we greatly appreciate your leadership in that role. I think it's an extremely important topic. <laughs>